Hi, and welcome to London's Craziest Gangster with me, Mr. Fish, keeper of the dead man's Bible, where all the rules of sight are thrown, tossed, and washed away. Okay, today, crash out your father, we're going to deal with the police. Okay? And it's funny, whenever you ask anybody, no matter from what background or colour or race they are, they always say they hate the police. Which always confuses me because I'm in the game, been kicked the fuck by them, battered by them, you know, you know, mistreated by them, and yet I don't hate them, and yet people have never had any uh, uh, had any contact with them or communication. Hate them, uh, I miss, uh, I miss, uh, I hate them. But when you go deep, they don't actually hate them. They actually mistrust them. Yeah, and it's the same with the police, right? Vice versa. I was speaking to a policeman at a time when a policeman had been injured, uh, had, had been killed out in the sticks, and the sticks is the country, by three youths in a car. And I said to this policeman, oh, you know, I, you know, I apologise for his death and that. And the policeman said, oh, that's unusual. Most people hate us. And I said to him, well, I don't hate you. And so it just showed me, you've got the public hate them, they hate each other. What chance do you have of keeping our children, our property, and everything safe. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so anyway, I had to laugh. I've been, uh, you know, uh, smashed the fuck by police numerous of times, and, and really for doing nothing. And so, crash out your father. You know, you have to deal with the police the way they deal with you. And the first trick of dealing with the police is don't see the uniform. Okay, don't, don't see the uniform. If you only see the uniform, then you're not going to be able to talk to them respectfully and all the rest because you're going to see the other officers that have heard you. You always have to see the person in the uniform. And I'll never forget once when the police did come to my house once, 11 handed. And a young policeman, as I was getting ready to go in the van, turned around and said to me, I don't get it. And I was confused. I said, what, what is it you don't get? And he said, well, We've got 11 police officers for you, a van, two cars. He said, and yet you're the most politest, respectful person that I've met. I said, sir, don't let the paperwork fool you. If, you. if you bring it to me, I'll bring it back to you. And it reminds me of an episode when I was in, uh, when I was in uh, Brixton. And I'd just come out of prison, done two years uh, a bird, because I'd just uh, got sentenced up to the old Bailey. Uh, for a gun, a police gun and that. And so crash, I'm going to visit my mate Mr. Byrne. Now Mr. Byrne had been arrested with Mr. Skips and they had been arrested for a crime in London and they were on the mark. And so I went to see Mr. Byrne to see how we could help him deal with the situation. And so I'm on a bus going to Brixton HMP where Mr. Burns was residing and all of a sudden crash, yeah, I've heard this, store, this, this commotion uh, on, on the bottom deck. So being the person I am, because I hate seeing people in trouble, and if I can prevent someone getting hurt, then I will do so. You know, so I've gone down to have a look, and I've seen, uh, I've seen a, a, a black woman with a child in her arms try and get her pram uh, from underneath the stairs of the bus. We know where the prams can go. And it was at the time when we were on the double deckers, but everyone could just get in and off, get on and off at the back of the bus. And crash out your father. I've gone down there. She's fighting with the conductor. So I've got in between them, split them up, give her a pram and told her to come off the bus. And she's done that. But the bus conductor now, yeah, black fella, he still wants to go out. And I'm going, look, mate, just look, calm down with that leader. Move, he's going, move, just move on. Let me do my God, do not, something like what? You want to fight a woman? What, with a baby? I go, okay, then you really want to fight? Crash! Fight me, yeah, let's do it. So anyway, he's gone, he's got past me. And I'm chasing him around the bus. But every time I'm running that end of the bus, he's that end. And by the time I'm running that end of the bus, he's that end. <laughs> so they crash out as your father. I couldn't catch him, but all the other black people go, yeah, yeah. They're on my side because they could see I'm helping this black man to pay me. The, the conductor was out of order. So anyway, the police are coming. And so all the black people are going, ah, oh, begin, begin, which is, you know, black for police. So go, so I've quickly walked off. But just as I've got down to the fridge, which is a nightclub in Brixton, 
a lot of you might know. Crash House, your farmer, yeah. A car's pulled up behind me. And as the car's pulled up, crash, yeah. Coppers come out. And he goes, excuse me, sir. I said, yes, sir. How may I be of service to you? And he said, uh, have you just, may I ask you where you've come from? So I said, oh yeah, at Brixton Prison, sir. He said, oh, and, and did you get the bus here? I said, oh no, sir, I walked, sir. So he looked at me, I'm going to write red tracks with me, my jacket, I think there ain't no one else in London, let alone, <laughs> let alone in the manor, I'm dressed like that, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I crash out your father, yeah. I give him my name. And I've heard it come over the uh, radio. Careful, careful, firearms, firearms. So the moment he's heard this, he's now switched his attitude. He's gone, right, it's all right, it's, it's my right to search you. And if you don't let me have a search, will I use force? So I thought, oh, okay, well, no chance of negotiation. No chance of reconciliation. Yeah, okay, I mean, we haven't even started yet. So I thought, alright, let's use fools. Crash, I've got my cow, let's use fools. Yeah, I'm rolling now, I'm rolling now, I'm yeah. <laughs> and grab out your mouth. Who's got help? Assistance, 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 friends and friends. <laughs> Tell you about they've all come pouring down. Yeah, Bloody like, bad guy, all turned up. Those of you who know Brixton know when it's on, it's on. <laughs> so crash, how's your father, yeah? <laughs> They all turn some now, like you know, the speedball in boxing where you go round and round and round. So they, I'm surrounded by them, so I'm now like crash. I'm on the speed. I felt like General Custer with the Red Indians. <laughs> I'm surrounded. Oh, man. <clears throat> so anyway, I'm going, come on, then, let's do it. Come on, then, let's do it. And they're going, oh, calm down, calm down. We only want to search. We only want to search. I said, mate, I know what you want, but the problem is he said we, we use force. So I'm saying, right. Not an issue, let's use force. Not no big deal. We're gonna do a kill me. So anyway, as I'm having this standoff, a car uh, has come by and the traffic lights green, he's they've stopped but they're looking at all the commotion. And so another car's coming to the back of him. And so one of the police was saying, Oh look, come on son, you might as well let us search you now. Look what you've caused. So I said, No, no, stop, look what you've caused. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, yeah, you stopped me, I never stopped you. You know what I mean? Crash, yeah. So, crash out as your father. I've allowed them to search me. So, after that, they go, Fuck me. that weren't hard, was it? I said, I didn't say it was. I said, you just, if you're going to approach the public, approach the public, but don't tell them, oh, it's your right to use force. Otherwise, the person might be like me and say, right, well, let's use force. So, anyway, crash. As I'm about to walk off, I turn back now and I said, excuse me, gentlemen. And they all look back. They go, yes. I said, by the way, I never carry it when I'm walking. <laughs> I walked off. And that's it with police for me. You always got to treat police as they treat you. I remember once, um, I, hit a, I had a, a, an altercation with a train guard down in Guildford. And I needed to get on the train that morning and he wouldn't allow me because I didn't have the money. So what I'd done, crash out your father. I've gone, right, excuse me, mate. Can I uh, ring my pal and let him book it by a credit card for me? And he's got all the tattoos, skinhead, you know. You can see his race. He says, no, I've got skinhead mates. I've got mates of every general yeah so he done for him so I knew what I'd do so I was trying to be polite but he weren't having it you know out and out right race thought, thought I was a, a peanut a dickhead yeah so crash out of your father I said can you uh, please ring my mate and he's talking no I was like come mate I, I can't get home um, you know you know, it'll all be paid for so he went no I, I can't do nothing so I said oh, well would you mind if I go on the platform wait for the train and then I'd pay them. So he pointed to a poster and it said £300, £400 consequences if you get nicked on the train without a ticket. So I said, all right, then, no problem. I'll take the consequences. Yeah, that's, that's how you got to be in it. 
If you're going to put a barrier in the way, let's take the barrier. Let's take on the barrier. Yeah? So crash out your five. I'm on the platform. And the train's come. It's busy early in the morning. Middle class London is all going, middle class Britain is all going to work uh, in the city. So the train's packed, 7 30, And I'm on the train, but the train's not moving. And I think, oh, maybe it's just, you know, sometimes you have to wait on a platform. And all of a sudden, the train guard is coming, you off. So I get off the train and uh, I say, um, you know, oh, mate, please, how am I going to get home? He said, I don't care. So I thought, yeah. I do. Crash! Oh, I bet him. I bet this guy. Yeah, you know I mean, sometimes, do you know what I mean? You've got to be polite, you've got to be respectful, but when people push the boundaries, okay, when people start mugging you off for your colour or, or for, then you've got to start going, you know what? Forget prison, forget, let's do this shit. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let's get it on, yeah? So I'm going to him now. And he goes, oh, oh, you can get on the train now. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You can get on the train, you can get on the train. I'm going to get on the train. I don't want to get on the train now. I said, you took me off. I was on the train and you took me off. So I said, F the train now, do you know what I mean? So anyway, I hit him again. He's on. Now, all the white people are looking out the carriages. There's one black guy. The only other black people down there are sheep. So, you know, they're all, they're all seeing what's seen in the films and the rap videos, you know what I mean? So one of them gets like, off and he rolls up his shirt. And you know, he's standing like that. So I went, oh, oh look, we've got a hero, have we? Oh look, and the train guard's on the floor. So I'm here, kick, so I kick the train guard. I goes, come on then, come and help him. Look, he's in trouble. So the train guard's are still standing there like that. So I've got to kick again, come and help him. Yeah, but now, yeah, remember I told you, suck the passing on. Now I've lost it. Yeah. So now I've gone to the whole train, I've been walking up and down the platform. I said, I'll tell you what, let's all have him do it. Let's all have it. Come on, everyone get up, let's all go toe to toe. So I had a feeling it's a lunatic. So all of a sudden, boom, boom, the police were called. And, uh, you know, you know, like I said, there's always been racial tension. Black is black. And they come down and, right, you're nicked. Yeah, yeah, you, so they took me down the station. Said, yeah, you come down here, you've hit the train guard. You ain't going to get bail. And then they said, no, we're going to give you bail, but you're going to have to walk home now. You've got no money. So I said, well, I'm allowed to make a phone call, aren't I? And they said, yeah. And so I rang up Baby Ryan, who owns the ladies of drum in the nightclub. And I said, Rams, come pick me up. His nickname was Rambo. <laughs> Don't ask me why, I couldn't have a tear up. So Crash House, your father. Ryan's turned up to pick me up in a beautiful 190E AMG. Look like a space trip. I've talked, spoke about it in podcasts before, and uh, they're like that. Oh, you got some uh, rich mates? <laughs> I said, well, I've got lots of mates, rich and poor. <laughs> so Ryan came and picked me up, but they were surprised that someone like me, you know, would have uh, a friend who has a Mercs and, and white people as friends come pick us up. <laughs> I don't know why they were surprised by that, <laughs> but they were. So crash. Now, I, they bailed me, but what happened was, I don't think the train guard wanted to come because he knew he was in the wrong and I was going to bring up the first bit. And so, I think they tried to do me on an ID uh, uh, parade purposes, yeah? So, when you get nicked by um, uh, British Rail and you have to go for an ID parade, they send you to Victoria, which I believe is the headquarters of the British Transport Police in London. And so I went to Victoria for this ID, but the policeman said to me, you've got two choices. One, you can, oh, you've got three choices. One, you can line up with a group of people and the person will come along and see if he can pick you out. Two, you can do it sat in a chair behind the screen and they will come and see you. Or three, you don't have to do it, but the reasons why you don't have to do it will be written down and presented to the judge. So I said, okay, no problem. So I said, I won't do it. Now you've got to do it. Now he switched on me, but why don't you just give me three choices? Right? But now he's gone, no, you've got to do it now. And I've gone, no, 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 you just told me I ain't. So he said, no, well, I'm telling you, you have. So I've gone, listen, mate, do yourself a favor. I'm in the cell. 
You do what you want. Bring as many as you want, and we're having. I'm in here on my own, yeah? I'm punching them all out. I said, come, mate. Let's do it. It's not an issue. Ain't an issue, mate. Do you understand? But lucky for me, one of the policemen there was a boxer. And Nigel Ben and... Um, uh, Nigel Ben and... Uh, from Brighton. Oh, God. You know, <laughs> the one with the forehead. <laughs> he had just had the five of them. I've got dementia, but I keep forgetting to mention it. <laughs> you are not a box I'm talking from Brighton and his big forehead, you know, Eubanks. Nigel Ben and Eubanks had just had a wicked war. I don't know if it's the second one, a proper war. And I was speaking to his sergeant before I got into, to, 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 I met the inspector who gave me uh, the choices. And we were speaking about boxing. So this policeman and him, could we have a good rapport? He now comes to myself and says, look, what's up, son? And I said, well, listen, Gov, at the end of the day, yeah, I said the geezer said I could do it in a line, all right, and get picked out, or I could do it behind the screen and then walk past, or I, d I don't have to do it, but the reason will be, uh, will be given to the judge and he'll direct the jury as to why I didn't do it. So I said, now I'm told I would do it. He's now trying to put it on me and telling me, crash, he's going to force me to do it. I go, mate, listen, tell him to come in. Now, what's happened? They've got the riot shields now, and all the riot kids come in and smash me. So I've had to go, right, do damage. So the copper, fair, that's why I say you can't hate all police. The policeman says, right, I'll tell you what, do it for me, son. I, I, I'll tell you what, I'll do it for me. So, you know, I mean, I've got police members waiting out there to bat me, who this inspector, who've obviously been watching too many Adolf Hitler films, yeah? And, and then this nice copper, so I thought, well, come me. You're only going to get back. Might as well do with a nice copper. So I went and done it with a nice copper. And, um, you know, I did the ID parade. Now, it was quite funny because while I was waiting for the ID, while I was waiting after the ID parade to go to court in Winchester, I got nicked with the police gun and had to go to the old Bailey. So while I'm in Wandsworth waiting to go to the old Bailey, they came and took me from Wandsworth to Winchester to get tried for the train guard. But, now, <laughs> people go, I'm in denial of being black. Listen, whether you're black, listen, mate, you're treated everywhere. And in them days, what happened was, crash, yeah. Listen, I've gone to Winchester, I walked in that court. You know, for those of you who haven't been to court, sometimes the judge will look up and see what he's dealing with. He'll look at you see your manner, how you are, whether you respect him, you know. This judge, <laughs> this judge, yeah, he didn't even look up, yeah? <laughs> <He's> just <laughs> So what he was telling me in that statement was, Mr. Fish, what, you come down here in the middle of the country, yeah, hit one of ours and now you think that nothing's gonna happen, this is going to be five years, you know, like, everyone thought I was an alien. But just due to luck, I had to go to the old Bailey. And when this charge came up into, in front of the old Bailey judge, because really it was only in fighting and ABA, the judge didn't even look at it, so he gave me a year. And so, you know, I had to laugh. You know, you, police, you have to deal with them as they deal with you, you know. Um... Another funny time I had with police. One day I'm on a motorbike and uh, I'm on all the levers, the hump, I've got the helmet, and there's about 30 groups of kids all around the bike. It's a brand new fire brain, I've just brought it. And uh, I'm not trying to know one Sunday, Sunday evening, I'm a good laugh with the kids, make them happy. You know, you've got to help the kids and you always make them laugh. Make them happy. It's just the rule, isn't it? It's the rule. And this police car came. Okay, comes along, and he pulls up by the bike. So he says, uh, is that your bike? I look around, <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, unless I'm a spaceman walking on Mars, <laughs> wearing an army and an all in one leather suit, yes, <laughs> you know, yes. So Chris has your father there. He says, and is that your number plate? And the number plate I had on there, well, you know those, when you get the small number plate, now they're now illegal, right? Because the cameras need to catch them to 
pay fines when they're speeding. And so I look again now, you've asked me if it's my bike, I'm in all levels, I've got a helmet on, yeah, I've just told you it's my bike, and now you're asking me if that's my number plate. Well, if it's my bike, it's got to be my number plate. Hello, Charlie. So I said, yeah. So he goes, now this is what I'm saying with police. You've got to always understand the attitude they're coming at you with first. Let them start first, not you. So there's no reason for him to do it. So he said to me, right, yeah, just trying to impress the kids that he's the man on the block. You know, right, if I see you with that bike again and with that number plate, yeah, I'm going to give you an on the spot. Thirty pound fine. Oh, you know. So I said, "Sir, with respect to you, and it is respect. Number one, that is how I bought the bike, and that is exactly how the bike is going to stay." But more importantly than that, yeah, I got 99 years, yeah, IPP sentence. Do you really think I give two Fs about a 30 pound on the spot fine? <laughs> you just gotta laugh. Right, easy on the mic and mind, there you go. The camera's flashing.